Hello, folks. We're a minute late already. We were supposed to come on at exactly 9.30 but, or 8.30 Mountain Time or 7.30 Pacific Time, 10.30 Eastern. I'm in Louisiana, <laughs> and Tadio is in Colorado. Yes, sir. He's wearing a university at Buffalo shirt. That's where I got my master's. <laughs> State University at Buffalo. I oh. should be uh, now. I've got my master's degree at Southeastern Louisiana University. Okay, nice. Wearing Saints gear today. Oh okay. well. So you're playing a team without a quarterback today, aren't you? <sighs> Craziness. Hello, Hi. Michael Stout King. Good morning, Chadio. Hey, what's up, bud? How you been? Been well, been well. I'm half asleep right now, so hopefully the beer I picked out will wake me up a little bit. Yeah, it's stout breakfast for him. Now, I'm in Louisiana with Louisiana <coughs> Imperial Gingerbread Stout Reviews. It's supposed to be Louisiana Imperial Gingerbread Spice Stout Reviews, but they told me I had too many words in the title for my name. <laughs> Chattio is with Chattio, and Michael is, is represented by Stout King, Empire of the Empire State, Brooklyn, mm. New York City, New York. So Michael basically runs a beer empire there. You would agree with that, right, Michael? Yes, it's it's very large. Nice. Now, it's uh, we're here because John and Ilya is off, off, <coughs> out, out and about. So, mm -hmm. uh, I said I'll host it, and I because I realized it was falling on the tenth anniversary of Louisiana Beer Reviews started exactly yeah ten years ago today. Congratulations, bud. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Vanessa Kitty. Hello. <laughs> Sound like your nose bothering you a little bit. I know a lot of people are getting sick these days with viruses, whether real or surreal. Um, well, now, Michael, let's get to the heart of the matter. Oh, yeah, it's also the first Sunday of Advent. Advent. Now, here is what I have. I know Michael wants to know. <laughs> That's a good one. Here's glare. I got KBS, Kentucky Breakfast Stout, the Great Cosmetics. And this is their <clears throat> Mackinac Mackinac Fudge. A flavored stout Mackinac Fudge. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's eleven percent alcohol. I don't know the IBUs. I can't remember. They're forty. Um, and it says here. Here's the interesting thing. And this caught us off guard, uh, you guys, when we were uh, doing the review Friday on my back porch. My friend David said, oh, "This thing is all natural flavors, right?" And I was like. <clears throat> Of course, and like literally as soon as I said that, I started reading this very tiny disclosure on the side of the bottle. Now listen carefully to this. Malt beverage, uh oh, somebody got an echo problem. Malt beverage with artificially flavored Mackinac fudge coffee. So what, what happens, they're using Mackinac fudge coffee, but that coffee itself is artificially flavored. So that's the mm -hmm. problem there. Um, maple syrup, which is actual syrup, and chocolate. They're using actual chocolate aged in oak bourbon barrels, actual oak barrels. Okay, so now Chadio is going to yeah. tell what he has. All right, hold on. I'm trying to find IBUs. Found it. Yes. All right, perfect. That was good timing. Today I have uh, Epic Brewing Company's uh, Son of a Baptist or SOB. It's 8% and 60 IBUs. They're based out of Denver and also Utah. So interesting mix there. Interesting. And it's made with uh, rotating artisan coffee. It just doesn't say where the coffee comes from. I've never um, <laughs> seen their beers sold around here. Now, mm -hmm. Stout King, he might have gotten rid of the echo issue because I, I was hearing myself, so we can't have mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Okay. So I have. Uh oh. Ooh. The great one. So this is this is the upgraded Guinness. In that yeah, it's, it's the more it's the more <laughs> rare one to find, but it's available if you look for it. Yeah, and in and, fact, in some, um, country, in some countries, you might have your volume too high. I think in some countries, 
it is the standard Guinness. Like if you go to, I think like Nigeria or say, uh, Jamaica, it's the standard Guinness. And hmm. uh, they have a, a lower, you know, they have the 5.6% in, in the United States, which is a much different product. And I know Michael agrees with that. So now the, the great classic foreign extra style. Now we have someone coming in and his name is the Whiskey Scout. Now, Paul Middlefoot, no, we don't have a, a different cast because John and Ilay's cast tends to rotate depending on if people can join or not. And usually Michael's there and I tend to be pretty regular, but it, it's all up there. <laughs> people can join or whatnot. Hello, Whiskey Scout from the great hey guys. Kansas Prairie. Right. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. I got the, I think it's, is it up? Am I up? Yep. Okay. I got the Guinness uh, Imperial Gingerbread Spice Stout, aged in Kentucky bourbon barrels. It is 11% ABV, and uh, brewed and bottled by Guinness Brewing Company, Baltimore, Maryland. So it comes out of the American side of things. Uh, a winter treat was brewed with allspice ginger, and <coughs> nutmeg, then aged in bourbon barrels. Rich nuts of gingerbread with warm notes of bourbon. So we'll see. Was it expensive? Uh, yes, this one was actually this was the most expensive. I bought the regular Guinness uh, Imperial Stout, and I bought Over the Moon. I bought something called Fiddler's Elbow, which I still don't know what it is. And a couple others, but this one was four. I think it was like four dollars and eighty nine cents. So it was the priciest of the four of the six. Mm. Four eighty nine. That's after yep. or before tax. Uh, that was what he rang up. So that would have been before tax. I still got uh, ten percent off the six pack because it's a mix and match six pack. So that pretty should have took care of taxes. And they usually always drop the ten percent if you buy a six pack. Well, that's interesting because well, it's, actually, you got a better deal than I got. I had to pay more than that for mine. <laughs> I wasn't too like delighted with the. With what I, I'll tell you right now what I. Oh wait, I'm thinking of a different beer. <laughs> Let me. I tell you right now what I paid. Sorry for my discombobulation, which, if people know me, is not not unusual. Um, <laughs> oh well, uh, I paid four dollars even. Yeah. Different markets, different prices. The markets. Yeah. Now this we <laughs> have. Was twenty ninety nine for the for the four pack twenty dollars ninety nine cents plus yeah. tax. I saw it yesterday, and that store wanted twenty one ninety nine, but they did have the espresso, the other one, mm -hmm. and uh, but I didn't buy it because I said I'm buying so much beer today. I'm spending so much money. I better chill out. So I did not buy the, that for twenty one ninety nine. And furthermore, uh, they didn't have singles. I would have purchased a single, but they didn't. I didn't see it. Oh. All those KBS like that products, whether it be the espresso, the Mackinac, or the uh, well, the raspberry one, the the L big luscious, that was only like I got paid eleven ninety nine or twelve. No, it's more than that. I think it's twelve ninety nine for that six pack. But they all top out at nineteen ninety nine here in Kansas, so we're kind of lucky. Dude. You rarely yeah, see it more than nineteen ninety nine. Um, sorry. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, <laughs> Well, at least you can get them, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could go buy a four pack right now. Big Luscious Espresso. I could even get last year's CBS if I want to shop around. Mm. So, okay, I know what I was going to say. Now I'm going to present mine. I know what I was going to say. <laughs> I was looking for barley wine, mm. and I never could find any. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I asked. I went to one store, and the girl says. Uh, you need, did you find everything you wanted? I said, no. I said, I'm looking for barley wine. She, the expression on her face indicated to me that she didn't actually know what I was talking about, but she mm -hmm. said, oh, okay. And I was thinking, nah, they're not gonna have it. Mm -hmm. So I used to be able to get Sierra Nevada Big Bigfoot. Yep. Gone, can't find it. All right, this mm -hmm. made a nice guess when I cracked it. So I'm gonna mute some people, just not out of disrespect, but out of, I'm hearing, hearing echo, and I, that's always a bad. That's a that's a no no. Okay. So, but then we'll open the the talking back up in a minute. You see a moderate 
head and um it's very dark brown i wouldn't say black though i'm trying to unmute people just to give them a chance because what what We'll try to nail that down. Now, um, oh, wow. this thing, it screams fudge, man. This is like the most fudgiest thing I ever smelt aside from fudge. I'm going to go drive up to the UP in a little bit. <laughs> Not really. Um, but truthfully, the true story is there's a highway that starts in this town. And if I get on it and go north and don't get off of the road, it will take me to the border of Michigan at the upper at the upper peninsula, believe it or not. I did that once. It was very interesting. But I didn't know. I had no clue what Mackinac fudge was. So I didn't. I would have bought it, I suppose, if I don't know. So it's very fudgy, very coffee, very dark roasted malt. This is so dessert like. It is a dessert. It is a dessert, but I'm having it for a morning, mid morning um, liquid libation. Now, we were shocked with the artificial flavoring issue, but the coffee they use is artificially flavored. So that may turn some people off, may irritate them. And I was looking up the federal regulations of artificial. I'm just going to read what it says real fast about artificial, and, and then we'll go on. Uh, the term artificial, this is from the Food and Drug Administration, the term artificial color or, oh wait, that's color, oh, they're talking about coloring additives, uh, but it goes along with flavoring because they're going to use the same description with flavoring. It says, uh, any well, I'll get back to that because they're talking about a chemical preservative. I mean, a chemical com composition of it. I don't want to take too long. So what I mean is that if it tastes like chocolate, but it's artificially flavored, that means it's not chocolate. It's some other chemical compound that tastes like chocolate. But it's considered harmless for human consumption by the U.S. government. Um, that's all I can say about it. I mean, if you ever had a cake at a birthday party, you had artificial flavoring because I can get and coloring because I know all that icing and all the little things and candy on it is not natural in 90% of the cases. But anyway, cheers to you all. Um, people like to say cheers on these hangouts, so they're muted so they can unmute if they want to say cheers. 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 Now I'm muted. Cheers. You were making a joke. A while back that if you didn't say cheers, you got kicked out the hangout. And then somebody was like, is that really true? Double cheers. <laughs> somebody was telling, is that really true? I said, no, um, we got a lot of jokesters on these hangouts and they say things that, and they have a dry sense of humor. So they kind of deadpan it and it doesn't, it, it does seem that it would be real, but it isn't. All right. So it's very chocolate flavor, coffee, dark roasted malt, sugary sweet. I mean, it's like you're just eating a fudge. A, a piece. It actually tastes like a fudge brownie, though. You know what I'm talking about. More than a... I got some interesting comments here. I'm going to post those in a moment. Um, so that's... If you like fudge brownies, this will be your, your, your heart's desire. If you don't like fudge brownies, you're going to hate it. Uh, I know people that hate cinnamon. Well... I can think of a plethora of beers that they would be repelled by. Well, we understand people, different people like different things. So, but this is fabulous. I mean, if you want to pay, but you're going to pay, you're going to pay some good money. So if you're trying to get off cheap, just think it, it was not, it's not going to happen with this. Okay. Now I'm going to go over to Chadio and he, he's going to tell us about his interesting product that I cannot get. <laughs> All right. So I, Picked up the uh, Epic Brewing. I think I called it Epidemic earlier. Sorry. Um, some music software or music I use for videos. Um, so Epic Brewing Company is out of Utah originally, and then they have a play uh, a brewery also in Denver. It's the SOB or Son of a Baptist. It's 8% with uh, made with rotating artisan coffee, coffee stout with cocoa nibs. So I figured it's really early for me here. I was up late last night taking care of a few things. So 
Wow. Why not combine coffee and beer? All right. Get her Chad, in the class. Chad, can you see your own comment, Chad? Yeah. 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 Um, they were, let's just say the Mackinac were off the shelf in two days. <clears throat> so they picked up the espresso, um, or they got a bunch of the espresso four packs, nine ninety nine. So just, you know, I don't think the liquor store knows what they have or what it should be selling for. So that's kind of nice. All right, get her in the glass. Got a pinky head. Kind of a dark khaki color. Beer is dark itself. Can't really get any light through it. Not even at the bottom. Mm. <clears throat> the aroma is very much coffee and cocoa. So well, that's a great combination there for a stout. Ooh. Yeah, that definitely smells like really high class coffee too. Yeah, the flavor, uh, coffee is definitely the prominent flavor in here. Coca nibs are kind of on the back end, which uh, is interesting. You see, like the chocolate being the forefront flavor, not the coffee, but coffee is a pretty overpowering flavor itself. So, yep. So, yeah, we rotate around. We'll give it a score next okay. time. Cheers. So it looks like you're on the right. It's going to be a good one, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Cheers to you. If, Cheers you are, if you are able to find this Guinness, it is a really good one. It's their foreign stout. It's 7.5%. And um, it is different than either the Guinness draft or the straight Guinness that you get, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, Jay, is 5.5%? No. 5.6%. 5 okay, so anyway, it's interesting. It's 11.2 ounces, so in this glass, it didn't fill it, but it goes up to, would you say that's like the three-quarter line? Maybe a little past that. Yeah. And it's got a little thin beige head. This, you're not going to be able to see the carbonation, but there's carbonation. Let me get a nose on it. You're getting the roasted malts. You're getting coffee. Very roasty. That's about it. Let me give it a taste. Cheers, everybody. Cheers to you. Cheers. Okay, the taste is very roasty as well. Nature. The interesting thing with this, and I have had it before, you can't, you could never tell this is seven and a half percent. And I guess it's because of the fact that Guinness is a wonderful brewer and know what they're doing. And the combination of the um, roasted malts in the flavor. And this coffee too. It's just so well put together. It, um, it's complex in a way because all the flavor combinations are so good. And it's the kind of beer that you want to go back and have another sip. It's just um, no, really, really excellent. This, I guess this, if you actually were comparing this with other main stouts, and obviously we, we, we're not going to get into the barrel age category, which is completely different, but just regular straight stouts, this has to be among one of my all-time favorites because it seems to get all the, it checks off all the boxes about what you're looking for in a traditional stout. And I could, I could go back and buy this over and over again. It wasn't, um, cheap though but i mean for what i'm getting i think it's i think it was two dollars and eight cents for an 11.2 ounce bottle it's not bad you know it's like um, a little over 12 dollars a six pack but you're getting a quality product and you can see by looking at it the head just keeps regenerating on the side it has nice lacing it's just a quality product i'll come back around when we do for our scores but um i highly recommend this if you can find it would you say that this is probably one of your more loved mass-produced products. Yes, I would say that if somebody were to taste this blind and not know,
they would probably not think it's a mass produced product. They would think it comes from one of the craft brewers. Okay. But Guinness has been doing this in 1759. Am I correct? They yeah. probably have a fairly good handle on it. Something like that. And you're right. That is probably the mm. best, uh, best produced stuff. I like it. It's, it's definitely good stuff. You're spot on there, Michael. Ooh. All right. We got that gingerbread spice stuff. One, uh, one person that me and Ron's familiar with, I think this is the one that he didn't care for. Ron gave it a pretty good review what, last week, I think it was. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. This is my first one ever. Kind of pours. The carbonation's pretty high. There's a reddish tint to it. As you look through the bottom of the glass, there's a definitive reddish tint to it. Carbonation, lots of effervescent. You can hear the effervescing. Uh, it's not maybe half a finger head. Seems to be sticking around longer than I kind of really expected. I'm not surprised by that. Uh, nose wise. Oh, it's spicy. You get all the, you get the garden winter spices like you do from any sort of pie, like a pumpkin pie or something along those lines. You get the nutmeg, definitely. You get the ginger. I don't notice the cinnamon off the top of anything, but. I don't know. So I can't tell you whether it's there's a sweetness there. You definitely get on the nose, but the with the spiciness is subduing that somewhat to be able to really tell you what I think it is, whether it's caramel brown, sugar, marshmallow, whatever. There's a vanilla note too, just a light vanilla note. The spiciness kind of overrides a whole lot. I'm not getting, I'm not getting a, I get a light maltiness, but I'm not getting none of that roasty. Again, spiciness is overriding it. Let's see what we get in the palate. Cheers, guys. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Oh. It's different. You do get some of the roasty malts showing up on the palate. More ginger. It is. You're eating a gingerbread cookie with a lot of other stuff thrown in. The vanilla sticks around. It's not, for me, it's not that boozy. I'm not noticing the booziness to this. There is some alcohol content, but I'm not getting that. Boozy note, not like I did with that barley one I had last week. Uh, the ginger is very dominant. There is some nutmeg in there. They say there's cinnamon. That's beyond my palate. I'm not getting no cinnamon. And uh, says allspice too, but I don't know if I'm getting really any allspice with it. It's mostly ginger and nutmeg, so what I'm per perceiving myself. It's so spicy, though, those can be hidden underneath those very well. Because ginger is a very dominant flavor as well as nutmeg. And you throw a lot of it in something. I still get the vanilla, though. And the caramel, it's a caramel note on the palate. The sweetness is a real background, but steady caramel note. We have a medium body. Not drinking like 11%. I expected it to be thinner than it was on the mouthfeel. I'm surprised because of all the all the carbonation. And so I expected a light mouthfeel. I'm actually getting a little bit of a medium mouthfeel. There is some body to it. Guys, it's a gingerbread. It's a it's a spiced beer with a little bit of that. There's a little bit of barrel too. There's a little bit of that woodiness that's that's helping things along. And that woodiness will also yield from the barrel. 
depending on the barrels. If they added the ginger and the nutmeg and the allspice and cinnamon to it, let's say, I don't know if they added, it says brewed with, so they did. Any of your barrel effect, for instance, your cinnamons, your nutmegs that come from barrels when you're using bourbons and stuff, that's just simply accented in here. I very rarely get ginger from uh, from American barrels. Uh, that usually comes from French oak barrels when you're dealing with scotches, not so much bourbons to me. But anyway, it's pretty decent stuff. I mean, I, let me think about it. We'll get back around. How about that? <laughs> Sound like a great idea. Um, I want to ask y'all a question. Do you find that my audio and video is messed up because Paul Middleford said he thinks it is? But to me, I can't hear. It, it seems fine. Yeah. You you have a little hesitation here and there, and yeah. you can tell there's a little hesitation, but mm -hmm. not overly. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a little bit of a what I call hiccups in the connection, but it's it's fine overall. It's strange because. Um, I can't perceive it. Like I'm just watching it in real time. There's no, I'm going to, I'm going to watch the playback later and see, but um, I don't know if I can do anything about it. I can't control my ISP. <laughs> you know, uh, I could switch, but how do I know it's going to get better? Yeah. So, but I don't want to be up here all like, uh, like um, Max Hedstrom, you know, I got to go wee wee. I'll be back. That's a good, that's a good idea. Now I don't want to be out, you know, but I can't help. All right. Going back to artificial from my um, information, I'm going to read this. It says the term artificial flavor or artificial flavoring means any substance, the function of which is to impart flavor, which is not derived from a spice fruit or fruit juice. Vegetable or vegetable juice, edible yeast, herb, bark, bud, root, leaf, or similar plant material, meat, fish, poultry, eggs, dairy products, or fermentation products thereof. That's what natural flavor would be. Artificial flavor includes the substances listed in uh, subsection 172.515B and 582.60 of this chapter, except where these are derived from natural sources. So <laughs> there, there you go. There's your answer. It's anything that tastes like something but ain't made from the something that it tastes like if that makes sense now yeah we oui, we oui. that's what the french say when they when they want to tell you yes yes now um frosty brew so uh okay yeah i can't explain it it's strange I'm using Google Chrome, which is what they recommend on StreamYard. Um, maybe I'll try to use Microsoft Edge next time, but I know that's a problematic platform of mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, Jay, what I was going to say, it was interesting. When I came on the internet this morning, I had to re, you know, log on and mm -hmm. shut down and come back on. I wasn't able to get onto Google Chrome. So mm -hmm. I'm on Firefox right now, which is my backup. Um, internet provider and i'm set up for it because i've had problems before and this way i can always get on a hangout if i have to have a secondary source now i'll have to figure out later what happened with the google why i wasn't able to get on the chrome it has to be something yeah, strange and yeah. Uh, yeah. i might try firefox i used to use that a lot uh, I, um, it's certainly a good subsystem to have because you can't just have one because stuff can no. happen no um, you might need to reset your router and modem too. It could be that. Reset them. To me, it's just, you know, you're getting, Jay, you're getting kind of a blip every once in a while. Like a hiccup, and then it comes right back. It's kind of worrisome, really. Um, anyway, I'm going to check on that after. I'm going to see what I can do. Uh, I'll put some sentiment in this, kind of like you do with eggnog. I would not say that cinnamon helped it. It didn't hurt it, but all the cinnamon's doing is floating at the top. It's not. If you put it in an eggnog, it's not the sink. The carbonation started bringing the cinnamon up. Yeah. It just makes it. 
it's just like a lateral move. It doesn't, it doesn't deteriorate it and it doesn't enhance it. Um, I just was curious what the heck. Um, they were bold over when David and friend, wink, wink, when David and friend came over yes, uh, Friday, and I said, I'm working all day. I mean, I'm about to get off of work. Oh, they insisted. We must do beer reviews. Even though you worked over eight hours. Mm. So I get home and I'm like, I got to get it together. You know, the horror, the horror. Mm -hmm. right. and I'm like trying to like, kind of like slap myself together. And they're like, well, we brought over all these Imperial Stouts. I'm like, great. Oh, um, boy. And they just like hit me with one of this one's 13%. This one's 11%. Now this one's, this one's a really strong. <laughs> if we, when you watch those videos that we did on the back porch, you're going to just shake your head and say, that's um, worrisome. But I, you know, I don't feel bad about it because I was the one suggesting that they come over the next day, but no, no. <laughs> he said, I'm off of work. Meaning, meaning I'm bored and, I want something to do and you're the guy and I'm coming over and, and I, I said, okay, man. And it was, um, it was fun. I guess you'd say that. And then I made the era of doing a bourbon, uh, a blended whiskey taste challenge about an hour later. <laughs> that was a pretty interesting video to watch. All right. Anyway, um, <clears throat> oh man, this thing is a dino mite. I rate this an F. For fantastic. <laughs> I love it. Um, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? This thing is an A plus all the way. Um, maybe it's artificial. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's like virtual reality beer. I don't care because it seems like reality reality to me. And that's not the eleven percent talking. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I'm not even going to bring up the fact that I did do a blended whiskey taste challenge this morning at five thirty for Dawn Busters. That is not going to be discussed on this hangout. <laughs> well, I oh, did that last night. Ooh, look at that! Some Maker's Mark. One oh one. I did that one last night. I could pull out, I could pull out gold and Robert would pull out platinum. Um, <laughs> but this is this it, it's it's a night. It, if you wanted to lowball this beer, or like downgrade it, like say I'm a beer snob, I'm going to show y'all what beer reviewing is about, and you start tearing it down, ripping it, finding all the faults in it. Fine, I think the worst you could do is a 98 out of 100. You yep. a jerk. I'm gonna say it's a hundred. It's great. It's world. It's nearly world class. To me, world class is above a hundred, but it's outstanding. I, I wouldn't add cinnamon. Don't don't do that. That was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that was a mistake. Uh, then you learn, you know. Um, uh, two thumbs up, the founders. I did not buy your espresso because the store I was in was charging too much, and I'm not gonna go that mm -hmm. far. But uh, if I see the espresso single, I'll buy it. Otherwise, forget it. I know what coffee tastes like anyway. All right, now Chadio is going to get his score. All right. Well, I'm going to talk about that Mackinac real quick. I, I, I wish the guy gave it 98, but that's because I don't like giving out 100s or 10s. You know, it's tough to hit the 10, but that's as close as you get is that Mackinac um, KBS. But I'm here to talk about the uh, Son of a Baptist from Epic. Uh, this is a really good beer. This is a great sipping beer for perfect for a Sunday morning when you're up late last night, but that's a different story. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is a good sipping beer. A little bit of a bitterness in, the, uh, uh, in it. The further you get into it, the more of the bitters you pick out of it, the bitterness. But yeah, this is fantastic. I'm probably going to run out today and buy another six pack and probably hold on to one can for Christmas morning. But uh, yeah, this beer is great. The coffee flavors are good. Um, the cocoa nest is a little bit of a roast in there too. So it's a very complex beer. And for it to being one of their standards, they bring out, um, I think it's seasonal. Like, I think it comes out late August and it's off the shelves and disappears for the year. 
around January. So this is a great cold weather beer. Um, hold on. There's not a whole lot I can say about this other than, yeah, great coffee flavor. Cocoa's good. Bitter's good. Uh, a little bit of burntness to it. The, yeah, robustness. I'm going to give this one a 94 out of 100. It's a very solid coffee stout. So if you can find it in your neck of the woods, I'd recommend picking it up. Unfortunately, I think Epic is sold west of the Mississippi. Um, I think Jay understands the whole Mississippi line with, you know, Coors back in the day. <laughs> but yeah. And now it's going on with Yingling here, but we're finally getting that next year. But yeah, this is a very solid beer. I highly recommend it. Uh, is it expensive? Standard price here is nine ninety nine a six pack. It was nine ninety nine, but like I said, the liquor store by me has the KBS for nine ninety nine for the four pack. So, but then they charged um, was it the New Belgium accumulation? They charged twelve dollars for the six pack, and I was like, "What the heck?" He's like, "Oh, it's a higher alcohol," and I'm sitting here like, "Yeah, but the KBS is like eleven and twelve, so and this is like an eight. <laughs> So I don't know. It's the distributor, I believe, at the liquor store by me that puts the prices in. So they obviously don't know what KBS is. Look, I've gone to bars and restaurants and I've ordered um, a Beta Amber. And I'm like, why is this under the import list? Because mm -hmm. it's costing a lot more than other domestic. <clears throat> they say, well, it's an import. I said, Across the lake in Louisiana is not an import. Import means from a separate country. And the, and the waitress is looking at me like, well, why do you want to be difficult? And I'm like, <laughs> why do you want to try to rip me off? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if I order uh, fried shrimp and you bring me spinach, I might take issue with it. But I don't know. I'm funny with it. <laughs> oh, man. Order fried shrimp if you get fried carp. You can be like, what? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. It's clearly misunderstood. Isle of Fire is talking about uh, the War of 1812. Yeah, I've done videos on that war. That was one of those not necessary in mm -hmm. under any circumstance conflicts. Okay, now, yeah. uh, Michael, the stout king of the empire of beer, is going to tell us his score for a delicious. Okay, I I refuse to take off points because it's a mass produced beer. No, that's, not that's good. Yep. Yeah. Just the fact that it is and it's able to be this good is amazing to me. But again, like I said, they've been brewing since the mid 1700s, so they have a lot of experience. And this is a harder one to find than your standard Guinnesses. The other ones seem to be available everywhere. This one, on and off, you can find it, but it's not available everywhere. I'm going to give this a 96. So this is this is an A beer, and it's bordering on even being better, but. You know, I can't give it a 99 because it's not quite there. But it's for what it is, a solid A. Yep. And I would recommend this. Now, I guess I wouldn't recommend it to a beginning stout drinker who's never tried it before. If you're going from Budweiser or some other macro and you say, I want to try a stout, you'd be better off trying the lower alcohol Guinnesses mm -hmm. because they're going to be easier on your palate. This might shock some people. And I'm not saying it's shocking because it's a stout. It just may shock the, the dark roasted malts might be too much for them to handle. So I think the draft one is probably their first, should be their first try because that's easier. Yeah, four, Plus that's fun because you can pour it in the glass and watch the whole cascading thing going on. So, you know. Right. And plus it's 4.2%. 4 yeah, that's what I thought earlier. You know, yeah. Whiskey Scout is going to score this gingerbread holiday bread spiced beer extravaganza from maryland okay uh, this is a tough one he asked it was a good good question by uh, ethan a minute ago and no it's not got a it, the, the sweetness is just enough sweetness to kind of sort of keep it in balance but it still has a sharpness to the spice so it doesn't allow the spice to become penetrating to your palate it's just, just a light sharpness to the spiciness of it uh, overall, it's not really my bag. It's not really my thing. I mean, it's okay. On a cold day, if I was outside by a fire and snow on the ground, I could probably give it an extra couple of points just for the ambience of the moment. But in here in the basement, this is a 91. 
Mm. It's just a 91. I mean, it's good. I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's not good, but it's just a little too overboard with the ginger and the nutmeg for me. It's just a little too overboard for that. Yeah. But you understand, the concept, you understand the concept that it's sort of a novelty product. Right. Yeah, I understand that. But I've still got to judge it on what my palate perceives it as. Right. And I know that. Yeah. So, but yeah, Robert, you're right. It's, 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 it's cute. It's interesting. It'd be fun to have a four pack with friends out by a fire on a snowy day. But outside of that, am I ever going to buy it again just to drink it? It's not that. I don't know. Just to show you how different it can be for different people, yeah. miscellaneous did not drain, pour it, but he said it was on that level. Yeah, he, he didn't it. care for it at all. He drank it, but he thought it was horrible. Now, again, it's everybody's got their own yep. thing right. for everything right. they drink. And it's just, I haven't tried it yet, so I can't tell you what I think. Wait till you watch. Wait. Wait, Wait till you see the duo review with my friend David and myself of this Guinness. Uh, gingerbread spiced out. You will. Well, you may not like the video, but you'll find it interesting. You, he, he was just going berserk with anger and rage, and I was like, "Well, you didn't buy it." <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is funny. I was just get. I was getting a kick out of that. If you watch the video, you'll see I was getting a kick out of it watching it. You know, and I was part of it. Yeah. No, I, I like how sometimes you guys like are opposites with stuff. It's so great watching that. And he always looks at you like, really? <laughs> right. And then he called me today, like 10 minutes before we went on the air. And he was like, hey, what's up? And I was like, I'm getting ready to do Style Sunday. And he said, what do you mean? I said, I mean, I'm getting ready to do Style Sunday. I cannot talk right now. Yeah. Not to say he was not, does, and Michael will verify this, not to say he doesn't have an open invitation to the dirt, doggone thing. Yeah. Be nice to see him. But he'll never join. He ain't gonna. If he's at my house, he'll join. But he ain't gonna join if he's where he lives, twenty five miles east of me. He lives like literally exactly twenty five miles east of me. He used to live nineteen miles east, but he moved. But um, I thought Lake Pontchartrain was east to you. No, Southeast, maybe. No, it's northeast of me. Oh, okay, never mind. I'll shut up. But it's a. It's. It's Lake Pontchartrain, the beach. There's a beach. If I drive to the beach, it's like, uh, oh, in a straight line, it's about five miles. But, of course, I can't drive in a straight line. So it's more like six miles on roads, on roads to Lake Pontchartrain. Yeah. And actually, Lake Pontchartrain, you could may, may as well say, is the ocean shore because it connects to a bay that connects to the Gulf that connects to the ocean. So... The U.S. government considers Lake Pontchartrain not to be a lake. They say it's an estuary. Yeah. Well, his name was Lake Charles out to the west. Yeah. Same, yeah. Same story of setup. But you're right. It's funny. And people don't understand. You go to the mountains, they build roads around mountains for the most part. In Louisiana, they build roads around swamps, so they're never straight. <laughs> In Kansas, you can get on the road, and if you have to take a corner, it's because they wanted you to go to the town and then you go back straight again. Right. They were trying to divert you into the town. Yes, exactly right. This is no joke. This is no joke. They got some areas in Louisiana where the swamp, the swamp is so dense and remote that if you go in there, you may never be found. I mean, it's not yeah. like you just jolly, oh, let's go look around. No, no, don't go there. You know, they mm -mm. Now, my father-in-law was lost for two days down there by Alexandria. Dang. He never, he came out, but he got turned around. He was in there fishing. He got turned around and it took mm. two days for him to find his way back out. Jeez. At least he got out though. That's good. Oh yeah. He's, I, I don't get off the boardwalk. If they have a trail, I do not get adventurous. Um, anyway, um, and I'm surrounded by swamps, of course. So, um, well, you know, even with the low score, and that is quote unquote low score because a 91, most people would not consider a 9.1 out of 10 low. Even with that score, we're still averaging a 95. Mm -hmm. And to me, a 95 for four beers is dynamite. Mm -hmm. um, yep. uh, as far as promos, well, this is the 10th anniversary of Louisiana Beer Reviews. I did a rec, I did one of those uh, 
what you call uh, nostalgia videos. I posted it this morning and people were like, oh yeah, that was your, it was kind of like a um, loop back to the, to the beginning because um, if you watch the video, you'll see it's a, um, it's a connection to 10 years ago. Um, but anyway, t t promos tomorrow, uh, Tuesday morning, if you want to deal with things that you probably shouldn't deal with, you can watch me do old Thompson, which is not even listed on most whiskey review websites, thankfully, <laughs> versus Sunnybrook. Another one that is also not listed on most whiskey review sites, uh, but it exists and it has been existing since the 1890s. I don't know how, but it does. And, and it's got the little man on there. There's the government inspector. None genuine without my approval. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So if you're feeling bad and you want to feel even worse, join up Tuesday morning at 5.30 a.m. Central and you'll feel a lot worse than you feel before. Now, uh, any other promos? The floor is open. Well, last night I released a video of Maker's Mark 101. It took me two days to shoot it. My camera crapped out on me the day before yesterday. And then last night I finished the video. I got it charged back up and it's been acting weird. I need a new camera, but, uh, so it's a two day video. So you get day one's views and you kind of get day two's views and they don't change. It's very consistent. It's a very good product. So that's what I did yesterday. Released that. And it's a long video because it ended up being two days over, over the span of two days, but it's 15 minutes, which is kind of long for a video. But mine are starting to get longer and longer. I don't know why, but they do. You're like me. You're drinking too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the same way. I'm kidding. I'm joking around in all seriousness. I'm joking around. All right. Tomorrow is Malty Monday on um, Jesse Bumpy's site, and it's going to be American Barley Wines. As of yesterday, Bumpy does not have one, but he's going to host anyway. I'm just going to use I'm going to use that barley wine that I drank, like I said last week, that one from Boulevard, uh, that collaboration. I can't think of the name of it right now. Shoot, I just I saved one just for it because it's a barley wine. I did find, and it's funny, I found it ESB finally, but a Beer Advocate labels it as a red red ale. But it says on the bottle, our ESB then with red ale. And so I don't know if it's ESB, it's red ale. I'm, if he ever does ESB, that's the closest. I've asked around all my liquor stores. I finally found something. One told me there was an ESB and there wasn't an ESB. This one here, at least it says ESB on the bottle, but Beer Advocate labels it as something else. Mm -hmm. And And Jay, you didn't give a promo, but this Wednesday is our special event. It's not wild card wednesday it is monthly jay's choice of what we're doing and it will be christmas beers holiday beer i forgot i forgot just the right. Right. all right that'd be a good one to that, would well, that, 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 that could be considered that one i can do <laughs> yeah wednesday night or in chad chadio's case wednesday afternoon um um we're gonna do we used to have a lot of West Coast people that used to join us, but um, they all dropped off because it was so much of a problem for them because they would be at work, actually. We were starting the video, and it was just, I knew they weren't going to stay around. But um, um, we're going to do holiday beer, Christmas, New Year's beers. I have one in the fridge. So um, I forgot. I thank, Mike, thank you, Michael, because I forgot. Um, no, talking about the long videos, I was just being cheeky about it. But I think what happens is you start thinking about stuff. It's really just a matter of that you're doing a video and you're doing like say Maker's Mark 101 or who knows what the what mm -hmm. could be beer or wine, and you're just thinking of things. So you're doing the video and you you just be thinking of stuff and so you're talking about it. And then before you know it, 15 minutes is going by and you think, oh boy, ain't nobody gonna watch this. But I do find a lot of people do watch them if you got something to say. Now, if you're just up there with tomfoolery, 
making little ridiculous jokes and all, you're not going to get the views. But if you're talking serious about the product, I think people like that. That's the way I feel about it. Yeah. Well, I always add a little, try to add a little background of what's going on. You know, sometimes if I, if I'm on a location where maybe something's happened, but I don't never attribute more than a minute or two talking about that. I, I try to keep that to minimum. And I've had people come on there and says, first two minutes of that video, you could just eliminate and go into the video. I said, well, yeah, you could, but there are a certain amount of people that's going to want to, that will find that interesting. Mm -hmm. And they may not, may, may not. When I do them in the backyard though, like the other night, it was funny. I bumped the table, about shook everything off the table. Then <laughs> I was funny. The funniest part of the whole thing was because it comes in a box, you know, and they, they give this presentation. And usually when you get a presentation box with your, your whiskey and stuff, usually you get a cork in the bottle. So I take it out of the box, and, and very rarely do I just do an open then then examine it. Usually I sample it for a little while, try to get a taste for it, but I felt like doing something different. So I take the ring off of it, and I'm trying to pull a cork for just a second, and I realize it's a screw top. And I used <laughs> one foul word. I used the F word, and that's very rare for me to mm -hmm. use an F word on my video. But I was so stunned that I didn't have a cork, a $40 bottle of whiskey that comes in a presentation box. Usually that's kind of the – they put the cork in there, you know, to kind of make it mm – -hmm. <clears throat> Add that mass appeal to it like it's a special product. Because yeah. screw screw caps are never special. <laughs> you can put wow. a screw cap on it. Now, <laughs> if we roll backwards, screw cap does not affect flavor of whiskey unless it works itself loose. Okay, so between a screw cap and a, it's more of a visual, more of a more of a uh, especially where Scotch is concerned, more of a aesthetic tradition. Yeah, aesthetic tradition to have it, but you know, really, you don't. Mm -hmm. So you no. said fooey. You said fooey on your hangout. Yeah, right? I didn't say fooey, and I didn't even know I said it till I was editing. It's so going back through editing. I thought, eh, can I take, should I take that out? And nah. Normally, I try to think of ways, and I thought, no, nah, you know what? This time, it kind of really fits. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't cuss a lot. It's not like you're going to see me cussing on the next one and the next one. I don't normally do that, but no. it's very rare. But this one here, it was just such a surprised moment. I was like, what? <laughs> Right. Now, Chatty, Chatty, any last comments for um, any? Um, I wish my football team had a quarterback today, but whatever. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean uh, today I have a, a beer. It's a beer review coming out about an hour and a half. Uh, Dirty bastard founders. So that was a fun one. And uh, whiskey, I, I curse from time to time, and and it's just kind of that natural reaction to, you know, to what you're dealing with, with, you know, whiskeys, beers, whatever. So if it's like, if it's, to me, if it's occasional, it's fine. But usually I try to, you know, watch my tongue and go darn it or stuff like that. But yeah, um, this beer, was, this beer was really good. If you guys can find the Epic uh, Brewing in your neck of the woods, pick up the mm -hmm. SOB. It's delicious. We have it in Kansas here. We get Epic. Oh yeah. I don't drink a lot of it. I've had, Big Bad Baptist or something like that from yep. um, a couple of others, but no, their parallels or their IPA parallel <laughs> loggers are good. Yeah. They're pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're at the last few minutes of this broadcast. And um oh Jeremy. Oh, oh boy. Formerly known, as, formerly known as the Dallas Texans, I might add. Um they have a good quarterback. They do. Yes, they do. The Chiefs. Yeah. Known as the Texans. It's interesting because if you look at the Dallas Texans' first three seasons, their uniforms were identical to the Chiefs, except they had a different detail on the helmet. Yeah. Um, but they they were struggling with attendance, so they said, man, let's get out of Dallas. Let's go to a that doesn't have a team, and they went to Kansas City, and that was uh, real successful. Now, uh, uh, it, it's talking about show and tell. You want to, you want to see what I encountered yesterday? Okay, well, yes, hold, on just a moment. okay well, hold on just a moment. 
Then along came Jones, Jerry Jones. Yeah. Cowboy. I had to show my Broncos glove. I got my Broncos hat on. I don't know. I'm a Broncos fan. I'm just, it's so bad. I'm, I'm in Denver, so I have to be a Broncos yeah. fan. Yeah. And then all the quarterbacks were like, oh, well, we can't play. And I'm like, as a kid, I was always a Miami Dolphin fan for years and years and oh, years. Yeah. Some guy cornered me one day and he goes, you're not a Chiefs fan? No, I like Miami Dolphins, but I come back from the Killer Bees in that time period. Mm-hmm. you know. And, and uh, he said, well, you need a local team. I said, well, sure ain't the Chiefs. It'll be the Broncos long before. <laughs> now, I, I like my homes. I respect the Chiefs and what all they've done lately. I mean, I was actually happy yeah. to win the Super Bowl. That was pretty cool. So now I come from liking them when they still had Mecklenburg and Elway and all the fun people. Yep. Yep. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that when the Denver Broncos first started, they had uniforms that were a different color. They were brown and mustard yellow. I know yeah, I got a hat. Do you know the story behind that? Yeah, they bought the uniforms from some old college all-star game. Because they the owner didn't have enough money to buy decent uniforms, but more more than likely it was too cheap, too much of a cheapskate to buy decent uniforms. I like the brown and mustard look. I'm just saying they need to bring it back once in a while. Yeah, and they had those vertical uh, circus tent circus socks. It was interesting, you know, bizarre. But. Yeah. <laughs> so they are Jeremy. They are getting better. Except they went to Denver last week and got their issue. Uh, it happens. A lot, of, a lot of people come to Denver and have issues. Right. That's what real football was about. All right. Now, I went to Baton Rouge yesterday, and I found three Louisiana craft beers. This company's been around since 2017. <laughs> so they put on the, since 2017. Um, I got Rally Cap Colch. Nice. Don't know a thing about it. I'm telling you, I don't know a thing about it. Mm-hmm. And then I bought First Pitch Pale Ale. Mm. Then I bought Educated Salad Tropical Wheat Ale. That just don't sound right. There's something wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Baton Rouge. Yeah, I, I don't know what the story is, but I figured what the heck. And then um, I bought this from other another Baton Rouge company that's been around longer. This is called Open Air Wheat American Wheat Ale. And I don't drink many wheat ales. Mm-hmm. It's like a watercolor uh, label. <laughs> That's I was great. like, wow. Yeah. Looks good, though. I like yeah. it. A craft beer that doesn't have a funny animal on the label. Huh. <laughs> no funny animals. No corny jokes. Or 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 they have the devil. You know, something to do with the devil. I like the looks of that label. It's a pretty label. We're evil. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know those kind of companies. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow. Never heard that before. Okay, and then I found this. Everybody had it for twelve ninety nine, and I told my friend David, I said, "I'm not paying twelve ninety nine. I don't care what they do." Mm-hmm. So you stole it, pretty yeah. much. No, you got no. It five fingers. <laughs> no, I was at Total Wine and More on Louisiana Highway four twenty seven in Baton Rouge, and I they didn't have a price tag, so I didn't pick it up. And then I was asking a guy as I was checking out, I said, "Well, uh, how much is the Bourbon County?" Oh, it just went on the shelf. I didn't put the tag yet. I said, well, that's why I didn't buy it. He says, ten ninety nine. I said, I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, Good deal. Good I went back deal. and got it for, for ten ninety nine. So <laughs> when I tell my friend David, he's going to be like, well, you didn't pick me up one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say, you're the one that's always cursing Bourbon County. You know? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's it. Uh, back to the main screen. Let real me quick, ask, can I say, can I say daddy something real quick? quick? daddy Oak. Yes. Can, you have Trader Joe's stores in Colorado. We have like two in the metro area. How close to where you live? Uh, not very close, but I can get there. What's up? 
Ooh. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> I may have to make a trip to uh, Colorado Boulevard for that. Four, four bucks. <laughs> There you go. It's like the two buck chuck, but a beer. <laughs> so and, and and some of the beers are really good. It's not like all of them are, but some of them mm -hmm. are. This one I've had, it's really good. So it's worth the four bucks. Oh, I bought a Trader Joe's. I bought a Trader Joe's gingerbread stout yesterday for the uh, winter. Uh -huh. Nice. Now, Robert, do you have Trader Joe's in Kansas? No, I have to go to Colorado or Dallas. <laughs> Dang okay, man, I, I, I guess KC I doesn't have one. Trips just I, don't think, trip, so. I don't think Kansas City has one. Wow. Kansas City don't even have a uh, whatever it was that that Ronald just said. Because I go to the one yeah. in Denver. Uh, whatever. What about Oklahoma? Would Oklahoma have a trade? Yeah, probably, probably, probably not. No. I don't think so. maybe Oklahoma City, but I've never seen it. I don't know. Yeah. No. Uh, Kansas City has a great liquor store called Lucas Liquor. It's huge. Mm -hmm. It's it's like the old TJ Wines. I've never seen that one, Jay. That looks. Oh, I can't wait for Wednesday now. Gingerbread spice stout. Nah. I have to look for that one, Jay. Nah. I've never seen that. I never saw it before. To yesterday, and uh, I was kind of disappointed though because when I looked in the back label, it was only a dollar seventeen for the single. It's mm -hmm. 26 IBUs, but only 4.8 percent alcohol. Ah, it's light. I said, "Uh, heck!" But this who is. Knows? Might I'll, put, I'll show it up again when you go to the main screen. Yeah. All right, I'm going right now. Mm -hmm. I'll go to you so you can show something. Chadio, yeah. this this one is seven percent too, so you could actually <laughs> probably keep this a while without worrying about it. It's nine. Okay. nine. I'm on my, I'm on my way. Oh, it is nine, baby. It is nine. nine. Yeah, I'm on my way. I'm heading to Trader Joe's after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but real quick, can I say something real quick? Sure. Mm -hmm. I, wo I woke up this morning, looked on Facebook, and I saw today is Small Brewery Sunday. So go out any way you can. If you have to do curbside pickup, pick up a crowler. Go support your small breweries, your local small breweries. Go show them some love today. In Utah, Kansas, that would be absolutely zero. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, no, 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 no. I thought uh, Orchard Park had a few. <laughs> I can't, I'd have to drive to Wichita for some oh, I don't know if they'd be open. Okay. <laughs> well, if you have local breweries, go support them. I guess I'm spoiled <laughs> because I have like five within five miles of me. <laughs> yeah, well, you live in a metro. That's, How many helps. miles are you from uh, Denver? Uh, downtown, probably 15. Oh, that ain't nothing. No. No, yeah, but, I, but I don't like downtown Denver in, anymore. <laughs> I don't recognize it. It's changed too much. Yeah, I heard, I heard some bad things about it. I was there yeah. years ago and I liked it. I was there mm -hmm. years ago and I liked it, but it wasn't like hobo hobo he, heaven back then. He yeah. just, he just yeah. jumped on Colfax Street and takes his time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Daddy, how far are you away from Brian? Because there's a lot of uh, Brian, Brian, and, Brian and I are about eight miles away from each other. We're in the same that's city. Pretty, that's pretty close. It's just too. he's just due south of me, so I may have to go knock on his door and be like, "Do you have some beer for me?" <laughs> he always does. You always just go over. I'm sure he'll turn you on to some of his homebrew stuff. I would, I would bring some homebrew to trade with him. So there we go. <laughs> well, I was trying to add Max Walt, but his his connection was. Hmm. Oh, talking about my connection, his connection was just totally dead. But you know, he's over there in Russia, so yeah. I mean, that's a real difficult. I don't drive my motorcycle. That's cold as hell out there today, and I don't feel like putting down everything it's going to take to ride. <laughs> Jeremy, <laughs> what Jeremy said. That's Jeremy, great. Said. Did you see what Jeremy said to you? Yeah, that's funny. yeah. That, that's a. I can do that, but it takes five minutes to put all the appropriate gear on. <laughs> I don't feel like it. I'm just kidding. And Jeremy, how many, uh, Jeremy, how many uh, local breweries are you going to today? Nice yeah, in that part of Arkansas especially. He had to drive to Little Rock probably. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, ought to be, Jeremy, instead of making comments, Jeremy ought to be on the Hangout showing a stink of beer. Okay, mm -hmm. now Matt Wall got a connection. Well, we're about to get off the air, Maxwell, but we'll let we'll let you come on for just a moment. Yep. And tell us hello. Hey, bud. Hello. Okay. Well, and Maxwell is in Russia. Hello, Maxwell. He's muted. His mic's muted. muted. Uh, <laughs> hey, hello. buddy. Hey. Hello. hello. 
Hey, from Russian Federation. <laughs> from Russia <Hello>. with love. <laughs> hey, well, thank you for joining, Maxwell. <coughs> thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thank you all. You've been watching a long time now, huh? Yes. I have a nice uh, can of butt. <laughs> <laughs> Not Budweiser, now, but it's a uh, Russian uh, language, but only but. But yeah, they can't call it they can't call it, they, they can't call it Budweiser because they sell the uh, Czech Budweiser there. And so there's a copyright conflict. Mm. Is it is it called Czech VAR like it is here? No, it's called Budweiser over there. Oh, okay, because here you can get it as Czech VAR. So what what happens is in Russia it happens. Budweiser has to be sold as Bud. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Only is it bud. King your beers too over there, or do you prefer others? Say that again. I said, I wonder if it's the king of their beers over there, like here, or does he prefer others like the rest of us? Yeah. <laughs> now, Maxwell, do, do many Russians drink Bud? Uh, only drink but because this uh, uh, nice beer uh, not uh, uh, hard uh, carbonating uh, 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 nice flavor uh, malt uh, just uh, just this beer only mm. yeah don't drink anything more no I like this. What about, Baltica? what about Baltica? No, no, Baltica is uh, <laughs> in, in Russia. It's a uh, bad beer. Maybe it's uh, something anywhere. It's maybe good beer, but don't not in Russia. Not in Russia. Baltica. Is. <laughs> okay. Well, we're gonna get off the air. Thank you for making an appearance, uh, Matt Paul, and, uh, He watches my videos. Um, I don't speak Russian. He does not speak English very well, but he does watch yeah, the videos. Yeah. And it's a good time. Thanks, everybody. I want to thank Chadio and Stout King of the Stout Empire of New York, Whiskey Scout from Kansas for joining. And uh, it's been ten years since I started video reviews. I think it's a good start. Mm -hmm. So. Thank You're you, doing everybody. Well, my friend, doing well. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody take care now. Have a good Sunday. Enjoy. Yes.